everybody, this is Brian and this is video 18. Today we're going to be discussing subroutines. What is a subroutine? Well, you've seen them all along. See sub main, in sub, that's a subroutine. It's just a block of code. So let's actually make one. Let's say sub print message as string. That's a subroutine. So notice how it says sub with in sub. A subroutine does not return a value, however you can pass values to it. See there is our parameter list. And you can have multiple parameters. For example, you can say uh, name as string. So you can have multiple parameters or none at all. In this case we're just going to say message and name. And in here we'll just use the console.write line something we're very familiar with and we'll say um, from and name message equals and we will just say message so all this is going to do is it's going to print these out and it's going to say from name message equals message and notice how you can put these and use them in any order you want. It doesn't really matter. Now how do you use a subroutine? Very simple. You say print. Now you notice how I hit parentheses. You really don't need to do that in Visual Basic. You just say message. So we'll say hello. And then comma. We'll jump to your next parameter. And we will say this is from Bob. Bob saying hello. You notice how it automatically adds that in. If you're coming from an old version of Visual Basic, this would have generated an error. Uh, we will get into functions later, but that would be a function. But for the new version, .NET, what you're using now, you have to encapsulate this in parentheses. Don't worry if you forget, it'll do it automatically. Let's run this. Uh-oh, build errors, what'd we do? Yes, expected. We missed something, yes we did. Ah. Let's run this again. From Bob, message equal hello. Now why do you need a subroutine? Hmm. Well, what if you want to do that over and over and over again? We use the Mary Chad group that we're used to. This is what subroutines can do for you. Message from Bob, hello, message from Mary, hi, message from Chad, hola. So what we're doing is we're saying print, and it's calling this subroutine down here, and executing the code inside of the subroutine. Well, once again, let's go back through this. We're calling print, and it's executing the code inside of print. You're passing it parameters, and there's our parameter list. Let's do another one, just for uh, clarity's sake. Let's call it sub, and we'll say counter, give it a uh, blank list here. Let's actually declare a variable above the main. I count as integer. We'll say counter equals zero. Down here we'll say counter plus equal one, and then console.write line. Now let's explain a little bit of what we've done here. We've made a variable outside of main and we're calling it down here in counter. This is called a global variable, meaning it's available to all the subroutines. If we put this in main, it's only going to be available in the main subroutine and an error will be thrown when you try to access it down here. That's called variable scope. Very important you understand that concept, so I'm going to go over it real quick one more time. Because the variable is outside of any subroutine, it is a global variable, meaning it can be accessed by any subroutine. If you put it inside of a subroutine, it's only available to that specific subroutine. So if we put it in main, counter will not be able to access it. Now let's just call counter. And let's call counter a few times. Get rid of our that. Let's run this, see what happens, and you see the variable is incremented, one, two, three. So by calling that subroutine, you can manipulate data in other scopes, in this case in the global scope. 
So that is our tutorial on subroutines. Uh, I hope you found this video educational and entertaining, and I thank you for watching.